Hi, Alison. Um, thanks for uh, being with me today uh, for this uh, short interview about uh, you, in fact. And um, I'm really glad to have this discussion. And it's been planned uh, since uh, months now, and uh, we're finally <laughs> get there. So I'm very happy to finally uh, do it with you. Well, so, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. Same as well. Um, you're very uh, yeah, famous uh, within Web.ms. Uh, you are a part of our everyday lives uh, at Web.ms because you are uh, our uh, IVR voice in our menus. Uh, so, and we of, of course uh, recommend your service to many of our customers. So uh, it, it's uh, it's feeling well to to talk to you. Uh, yeah, in this types of interview well so, you're probably sick of my voice by now so <laughs> uh no 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 uh, actually no no not at all because it's it's a uh, it's a re almost a reassuring voice that uh that you have and uh, it's oh, recognizable uh, and we we know uh that is a professional tone and and so so for us it's very fit uh or or or, or way to see a business. So um, no, I'm really not sick to hear, <laughs> hear it at all. Um, like I said, uh, when I hear somebody using your service uh, and your voice uh, in their in their phone system or any other uh, services uh, you are offering, uh, we for me it's a it's a, it's a good flag that uh, okay they they want to be professional. So uh, yes, exactly. Um, to start with, I would like to uh, maybe have a brief inter introduction about you and um, like what's the genesis uh, behind Allison Smith and the IVR Voice uh, company? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I've been voicing IVR and professional uh, phone prompts, AI call center prompts for probably close to 25 years now. And um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I started off as sort of a generalist in voiceover. So I did TV and radio commercials and, you know, the usual kind of stuff. But then I started voicing IVR prompts for TELUS, which is the big, you know, telephone company here in Alberta and Western Canada. And uh, yeah, and in Quebec as well. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it just sort of took off. And but I think the really big turning point was where I was uh, contacted by some some guys I'd never heard of in Alabama and they said we have some phone prompts for you to do and you know it's for this system called asterisk and I'd never heard of it uh, and it was pretty new back then so you know I just I did these prompts and I thought it was just going to be like a, a one-off just sort of a you know do the prompts and never hear from the client again well it turned into this a uh, gigantic thing where asterisk turned into be you know probably one of the fastest growing telephony platforms in the world uh, at one point in history so yeah people literally around the world implement my prompts into their systems and um, yeah it's it's always a very strange thing when i've attended astracon and i have you know guys from israel and south africa and japan uh knowing who i was it was uh, Kind of a strange thing <laughs> signing autographs and posing for pictures it was very strange yeah it's uh it, it's like if you you are a, a famous person but without knowing your face almost <laughs> um, i can still walk down the street and not be mobbed you know no, yeah no no but as soon as you speak uh, on a phone I'm sure it, it did happen thousands of times where somebody say, eh, yeah, your voice sounds fam familiar. Uh, <laughs> they do. Do I they knew do. you or something? Uh, yes. I'm about yeah, sure yeah. these things happen. Uh, well, and I've also had strange things happen. Like I checked into a hotel in Dallas to attend Astrocon and I ordered one of those uh, automated wake up calls with the hotel and it was me waking me up. It oh. was my voice. Yeah. So. <laughs> It was Very was strange. It strange, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was strange. It was, yeah. I don't know, but that's the thing about open source is that my voice can show up in places I don't even know about. So, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's it's probably did bring you a lot of of, of traffic in terms and and, and work after. Definitely, uh, definitely, I yes. It, it's uh, when you want to work with somebody, uh, you, you, that 
actually you know what they are doing what that they are you know that they are knowing what they're doing so, yes so um, yes it's definitely. easy to it's easy to give your trust and say okay uh i'm sure she knows because she'd been uh hired by yes. xyz and, and exactly yes. so yeah. um and probably uh asterix uh, guy or tillis people uh in the past like uh both the mess today does with with you recommend your service to um many many uh people uh so um that that's a really good uh, driving so a lot of uh you lost probably a, a big chunk of businesses because your voice was already uh, uh it's already in there the system in the system <laughs> but as that's soon as and you don't want to divert from uh, the original voice because no. it, it's it's it, it's a little bit weird to have one specific voice on a, on one side and uh, another voice in, yes. in a, under their menu. So they want to stick with this uh, voice. So they come back to you for, do, for doing the custom things. Yes, um, absolutely. So. Um, you know, I called a great big media company here in Canada. I won't name them, but we were having problems with our, um, our t uh, television box, you know, our DCT box. And uh, I think I counted about 10 different voices on their IVR, which is crazy. So obviously they're just grabbing a staff member to do an update for their system. And it's just, it's so easy to just have that same professional voice all throughout the system. I just think it sounds more professional. I it don't is. know. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And was it planned uh, your career in, in this field? Not at all. <laughs> So uh, my background is actually in theater. So I trained as an actor and, you know, I, I did a bit of acting in theater and film. Um, and then I just sort of branched off doing voiceover as a way of sort of paying the bills in between acting jobs, which, you know, acting is very unpredictable and you just never know um, when your next job your is. Goal. Yeah, exactly. So I started doing radio commercials and that was really, really fun. And um, then this uh, sort of specialization into the niche of IVR and, and telephone prompt voicing came. And I'm really glad that I have this specialty because, you know, I still do some other, you know, voiceover work, but really IVR is my core competency. It's what I do all day, every day. So with that comes obviously a certain amount of expertise in what I do. So, yeah, and I enjoy it and I still get to bring in a lot of the acting background. Um, I'm finding more and more people are really after kind of a persona and they want, you know, a personality in their phone system. So um, having that background in theater makes me a little bit of uh, a directable talent and I can take it in various different directions depending on what they're looking for. Instead of having only one, like one character, one, one personality. Exactly, and... yeah. Yeah, you cannot like you, the other talent sometimes, I don't know, but probably just have their uh, one specific uh, tone and the way to do thing. Uh, it's done. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, uh, and exactly. Yeah. It. But with yeah, background, like, it's... you know, even the, the trends in telephone systems, like it used to be there was sort of a, an automaton sound, you know, please enter your pin number followed by pound. You know, that's very straightforward and some people still want that, but I'm finding a lot of people are after more of a conversational, um, almost like a casual approach to it, which is great. I really like doing that because I think I like listening to it better than kind of a robot voice telling you what to do. Speaking of but, uh, it, one one new, not actually that new, but one 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 new uh, innovation in in uh, in the phone system is uh, to be able to speak like uh, maybe you already saw the um, voice assistants from Google that was able to call out and get you some reservation at a hair salon or, yes. or a restaurant. Yeah. That's, like that's, it was somebody. Yeah. Uh, it's it was only prompt, uh, but the, the other person at the other hand uh, couldn't know that it was exactly. Uh, yeah. AI automated voice, but yeah. in the back end, uh, there was probably someone did all the 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 word all the exactly and all the so uh, probably there will for the voice talents in the future. Uh, I'm about sure this will open uh, a, a new world, a new opportunity mm -hmm. for for. But so the voice uh, prompt by itself, it, it's nice, but I think uh, that on the future we will see uh, more uh, 
advancement or more innovation in 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 this regard so yeah uh, yeah, yeah exactly uh coincidentally i was just on the phone with my bank trying to straight out a you know a problem that i was having and i found their automated ivr said the term very well i'll put you through and i don't know anybody who says very well. I just found it to be old fashioned and kind of stilted. So I would have preferred it if he had said something like, okay, no problem, or something like that, that would be like a bit more um, natural. <laughs> natural, uh, natural, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and like you, a, a human. We, we kind of know when you're calling somewhere and it's a voice recognition system, we know that it's a, it's about talking to you. However, mm -hmm. uh, you can feel it more, receive more warmly, more, more human, uh, if exactly. it's a common language and, and something yeah. more casual and a bank maybe don't want to be too much casual. Uh, <laughs> maybe, but, I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this is very, uh, like, uh, uh, the next uh, overall the next big thing i i, I guess but uh we mm -hmm. we still we will need ivr prompt custom ivr prompt i did a video recently with the uh, marketing agency and we were discussing how you can leverage your marketing uh, through your your ivr and 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 yeah. you need to have something professional to do that so yeah. definitely definitely yeah you and i both know that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, speaking of other field, uh, which other service are you offering uh, apart from the IVR mm -hmm. voice? Uh, that yeah. Um, so I'm finding a lot of my regular telephone clients also have a YouTube channel, as everybody does. So many people that have me do their telephone prompts are also asking me to voice their uh, explainer videos on YouTube. So that's that's a really big sort of adjacent market that I'm getting into. So and it's fun. Yeah. And and a lot of them are, you know, telephony designers and telephony carriers. I've just done some for Grandstream and I'm, uh, you know, doing a bunch of others and they're they're kind of technical. So I'm really glad I've attended all of these conferences and attended talks. So I know how to say SIP GUI interface and <laughs> other <laughs> strange terminology but yeah so i do offer things like voicing of explainer videos and um and that kind of thing as well um also i've always offered things like on hold production which you know it's always the debate about whether or not you want callers to be waiting on the telephone sometimes it's just um unavoidable but you know if they have to i do produce um you know what i think are quite good on hold programs that are educational and hopefully callers don't mind uh, sitting in that kind of a waiting room that's sort of a limbo until they can get live service so yeah i do offer on hold production as well yeah uh, and this is a uh, the, the the advertisement style in, uh, when you're on hold um i think in your uh, omni-channel uh, marketing strategy when you are publishing uh, something online uh, that refers uh, to a phone number and they called somewhere um, having somebody like a prompt uh, or a recording of mm -hmm. uh, what's the cell process is or what they they should expect uh, to 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 know or what they need to get prepared to when they will be with somebody on the phone. Um, it can be very productive for the business and also for uh, the client. Uh, both uh, get values out of it. Uh, the operational yes. is the person on the on hold. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I should go get my wallet because I will need uh, this uh, card or this right. number somewhere. Exactly. So, um, Sometimes yeah. time it's not only advertisement uh, mm -hmm. advertisement is mm -hmm. a one big piece but um giving informational things also uh, add values to to uh, the process when when you're calling somewhere i uh, myself i very really do appreciate the uh, mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a weird example but uh, i recently purchased a car and uh when i was calling back to the uh, to uh, the auto dealer uh mm -hmm. on on the own old um place where i was uh, calling for the financial um they were explaining what's the process uh to of the financement 
Uh, yeah. And, and, and when I was speaking with the person afterward, um, it was easier to, like, I was already in the bath. I was already like uh, prepare and okay. Oh, mm -hmm. I know uh, uh, which question maybe I could go to and and absolutely yeah. Warding myself, so yeah, um, yeah, very very handy. Um, you know, the one thing I always say that uh, people should not do though is to include all that sort of informational stuff in their opening greeting, which a lot of people want to do. So they'll say, you know, thank you for calling XYZ. We've been in business since 1978 and we do this and we do this better than our competition. And I always say, take that information and put it in your on hold. Don't have it in your auto attendant greeting because it's, you know, the caller doesn't want to listen to a big commercial before they've even made a choice. It's crazy. Yeah. I learned the choices that when I'm calling somewhere often, I'm learning the choices by hurt. So I, I as soon as I hear the IVR, I'm like, two, three, four. <laughs> like jumping exactly. From, like right, I, I, right. I, 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 I don't need to hear, I don't need to hear all that. No, it's, uh, no. It's yeah. nice when you're the, to be well, to have the, a good direction when it's, you're a first time caller, uh, because sometimes the menu can be very confusing. You, yeah. you know, when you have to hear it three times uh, before really, okay, <laughs> Did I make the good choices? Where right, right. Will I talk with a good person? Uh, yes. Yeah. At the yeah. End? And you know, the other thing is, if the choices are too similar, you're sitting there thinking, okay, what I'm calling in is a little bit about choice number one, but it's all kind of like choice number two. And what do I do? What do I do? You know, like you don't want to make the wrong choice and have it to go must through be the whole specific. process. Yes. Be very it, it specific. Must... Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, little question for you. How many choices do you think should be in an opening greeting? Honestly, uh, I did design one recently for a cafe uh, with many um, uh, stores location. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it's also a distributor of coffee. Ca uh, coffee, yeah. Um, and it was a little bit complicated what he asked to me. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'll translate a little bit more like in, in something and it, it end up with it with uh four choice and a fifth one but the fifth one was like to be able to talk to a specific location so oh yeah i don't sure. really include the fifth one into no. it no yeah uh, but yeah it's uh and i i i all always um tell my customer to structure it in a de department wise um instead of person uh, or yeah. direct, directly to speak with somebody first of all unfortunately employees leave sometime so we have to redo your idr just because you said uh the, the name uh you want to talk to philip uh press two <laughs> right uh, <laughs> and what if philip, philip isn't is there, there anymore yeah anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's kinda, yeah 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 uh, so four choices is great. That's that's I think the human brain can remember four different choices. I read one the other day that had 20 choices in their opening greeting, which, you know, nobody will be able to make their way through 20 different choices, you know, no. and it's also important to front stack them. So have the most commonly chosen choices, or if you offer things like emergency support, or if it's in healthcare. And there's a chance that somebody's having a medical emergency. Make sure that's at the top of the choices. Yeah, even you even yeah. even maybe before the prom start, like 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 it's not even the uh, like if you have an emergency call, press two. Like at Correct. the first first sentence, it could be uh, probably the best way to to, yeah. to do that. Uh, even for technical support for uh, like uh, an IT company, I think mm -hmm. it could be uh, oh, yeah. a very good way to do that. Uh, you don't want to hear about the sales and the promotion of a uh, selling computer before. Nope. If you have a technical emergency, uh, press uh, press one right away. And maybe after that, uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, maybe introduce your company first uh, like, because yeah. at least they know <laughs> they, they call the right place. <laughs> but uh, yes yeah yeah introduce the company if this is an emergency and then the most commonly chosen prompts after that yeah yeah, yeah. definitely and it's with all um we, we're really getting into the gravy of the structure uh of this and um before starting to build up your your ivr uh what is the first thing you think um like before they 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 
they really build it up. Uh, and if yeah. you're writing the text, they, they will submit to you. Uh, yeah. What, what, so what he, here's think? here's the big thing that a lot of people don't think about. So if if people, before they write their IVR script, if they're just really, really clear on the personality of the company and the brand of the company and make sure that that personality and that that brand is conveyed through the phone prompts. I don't know if you've had the experience of going to a website and going, wow, this, this looks like a really neat, very slick, very up-to-date company uh, from their website. And then you decide to call them and you get a staffer that they've gotten from accounting to do their opening greeting saying, thank you for calling, blah, blah, blah. You know, it just, it doesn't match with the personality of their brand. So uh, I know it's kind of a touchy feely area, but I ask clients before they're ready to write, um, really get clear on the image that they want to project in their phone system. Does that make sense? I don't yeah, know. it does. It, mm -hmm. is, it really does. I think, I think, uh, you will not have the same tone, the same personality if you're like a, an amusement park versus a, a lawyer firm. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah, cannot, yeah. And, you know, even uh, some industries I'm finding are trying to be a little less formal. So I did one for an investment firm and they were targeting younger people trying to get into investing and they're trying to, you know, almost demystify investments and just say you know hey you made the right choice and we're gonna we're gonna guide you through this process because it can be a little daunting knowing what to invest in so they deliberately took a very informal and conversational stance and i liked that because that's the personality of their company even that's though they're they in investment yeah mm -hmm. but that's what they what that's what they choose maybe at the complete opposite uh, uh berkshire at the way uh warren buffett uh, uh investment firm uh, yeah, I don't think they will want to have a funny. Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> they, they're not there. Maybe I'm wrong. Exactly. But... Yeah, yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, that would be my first thing is just to make sure that the phone system reflects the brand and the personality of the company. It seems kind of basic, but really, if if you did that and you wrote the prompts in that style, and you know the selection of the voice talent or the direction of the voice talent is uh important to conveying that same brand messaging great right yeah and um after that um for my technical uh experience i'm always referring to the operational structures um mm -hmm. are, do you have any advice about uh how do you i'm always saying like maybe uh it will answer my my own question but uh, i'm always saying to my customer when you want to build your IVR or your phone structure, uh, think how your operation works overall. Um, and like, just write it down and think uh, how you receive your call and how they are distributed and or, or how do you want them to be distributed? Maybe uh, not as they are right now, but if you want to optimize your process uh, um, and as far as today, I think uh, it, it worked well. Sometimes it can be overwhelming for companies to, okay, uh, I have uh, 200 employees. Uh, I have to uh, make them in packets and 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 and, and mm -hmm. build them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, well, so don't forget that the IVR is for the company to make use of their live staff. So if if someone really wants to uh, make use of the staff that they have and their staff is, you know, technical experts and not so much sales, then perhaps most calls should go through to maximize the, the expertise of the staff, basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, we already counted or um, touched on the idea of limiting the number of prompts. So that's, that's a really basic thing. The other thing structurally is that I've never really been a big fan of sub menus. So if somebody chooses technical support, should they go into another menu where they have to refine their choices into that kind of thing? I don't know. My feeling is I don't think your staff is that specifically trained that you need to narrow it down to uh, sub choices. Maybe, I don't know. It depends on the company. Depends on the company and probably some industry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, 
be a biotech industry probably have some uh, deep knowledge in specific uh, thing. Uh, maybe the some menu could could potentially be used for uh, when when you want to reach uh, like a team of researcher or, or something like this. But uh, I think uh, like most of the businesses uh, in the world are, are SME uh, or SMB. So uh, mm -hmm. I think I think the the probably something like. 50 to 100 employees that uh, that's uh, uh, the majority of uh, the business's uh, size um, and the complexity of those business usually probably is probably not that uh, uh, wide so having so many choices is yeah probably yeah. Not, yeah. not a good idea anyway you will if you talk to if you talk to a specific audience and when you're receiving calls maybe this is it's okay but when you're talking to a larger audience like a, a, your customer base is from all the area um customer needs the simplicity so it come back always yes to this, uh, this absolutely concept. yeah do you know how telus explained it to me way back when i first started voicing for them was ivr is almost like an escalator and all the people riding up on the escalator have different colored jackets and at the very top all the let's say the people in the white jackets get get you know shuttled off to the left and then all the miscellaneous colors go off to the right and then within that stream to the right the red jackets the purple jackets get sorted into a different stream and it was a great way to explain it because that's basically you know the function of the IVR is just to make sure that the caller gets to speak to a specialist and that for the company's point of view their staff is best utilized handling a problem that they specialize in so yeah. and how long uh, the elevator uh, ride should last <laughs> exactly yes uh you know it's amazing how frustrating some systems are so you know a lot of the ivrs that i read don't really respect the caller's time and patience and you know philippe here's another really key thing is that people have already been to the website I firmly believe that we're so turnkey and we're so self-serve that we usually go to a website first to try to find a solution to our problem. And if you couldn't find it on the FAQ of the website or your problem is so problematic or sticky, um, or perhaps you're a little bit angry and you need to talk to a live agent. If more people wrote IVR scripts thinking everybody who calls in might be a little bit angry, that would help to design IVRs that flow quickly, that move the caller through the IVR and get them to live support as soon as possible, respecting their time and their patience and acknowledging that they might be annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah as you said, uh, now, like it's still a part of the population doesn't use internet so much, but it's right. very rare now it's uh, it, most most of them uh go to the website and 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 yeah uh, the buy in the buyer process when uh when, when you're looking at the buyer process uh before it, calling to a company to get information was the first thing you did and 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 as a as a company was grabbing this moment to uh to sell it but uh now the first uh, moment of true or the, the first uh the first touch uh is not through the phone company the the, the yeah you will not you're not you're not calling them anymore you'll do your own research on a, on the internet whether on their website or all around you're calling only almost only when you're ready to yeah. do the move it's exactly uh, yeah it's very yeah. rare that uh nowadays we we call just uh oh, I just want to have some information. Uh, usually, <laughs> you're calling because you want it, and and you want to either yeah. pass the order or or maybe you already passed the order on the internet, but something uh, went wrong or, or something. So exactly, uh, the yeah. need have changed a little bit. <laughs> then, yeah, and you know this is kind of why I would like to see one phrase completely eliminated from IVRs, and that is, did you know that answers to your questions can be found on our website? <laughs> They've already been to the website. Mm, yeah. they, they have, you know. Almost so. insulting to the intelligence of the caller. It's uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a pet peeve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and uh, speaking of waiting on uh, and being patient, uh, patient uh, uh, on waiting, um, do you think it's a good idea to like do a special promotion or a special prompt for Christmas? Or apart from just saying that your business is closed during uh, or, or, or like specific hour uh, uh, for, for Christmas time or New Year's uh, Eve or something mm -hmm. like this, but ju just like, I don't know, uh, doing a pre pre announcement. Uh, um to do like uh, it's christmas time and doing something like funny uh do you think it's mm -hmm. a good idea or yeah well you know i think um and are you seasonal doing <laughs> oh yeah definitely um so yeah i think seasonal messaging is good especially if it informs them about changes in hours and that kind of thing um i think it also does something else i think it shows the caller that somebody is actually paying attention to the phone system and it's being maintained on a regular basis. So I just, yeah, I think it's a really important thing to have maybe um, holiday messaging. Not sure, you know, again, if it should be necessarily comic or, um, you know, and of course you have to be very careful to respect all holidays. So a lot of them are very neutral. They don't say Christmas specifically, they'll yeah, just say yeah. the holidays, yeah. Um, although with that said, I have a great client in New York City. It's a camera store run by Hasidic Jews, and they had me record custom messages for each and every one of the Jewish holidays, and there's a lot of them. So yeah, they just wanted a specific message to play during that specific holiday. So but they are close. But it to, can be. Yeah. But because this store is probably close to their community. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole so, thing. Yeah. So it's not and, you know, like if they are like uh if they 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 want to they they want to show that they are close to them it's it's a yes. i think it's it's a community uh perspective more than than just like a uh like i want to be neutral uh, kind of position uh yeah. they, they they take position uh they know um they they know who are uh, the buyer uh, who comes to their store probably there's non-jewish uh, buyers that goes to their exactly store. exactly but yeah they yeah and you know persona. philippe the other thing i wanted to mention is that um with the pandemic um it's amazing how people have had to really keep up to date with their messaging so you know when the pandemic first started it was you know a lot of businesses were closed and it's really awful uh, PetSmart is a huge client of mine, and they were closing stores, opening new stores, and each and every store was modifying their hours and their health protocols. So, you know, we're not out of the pandemic yet. So I think it's really important for people to keep their COVID messaging current as well, because it's it's ever changing, Change. as you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, we're in, this is not... Uh, it's not done yet, and uh, no. probably uh, it, it's going to be a, a thing of the past uh, at some at some point. But yeah, totally. Um, the 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 uh, health um, measure that your store uh, yes. is taking, if you want to make sure that uh, the, your customer either respect it and or just being aware of it, uh, yeah. it it's important to uh, uh, and. Yeah, this uh, lead me uh, actually to uh, my other questions. Um, it could be see like making Christmas or even security announcement because uh, it's also a part of uh, a self belief um, for for some people. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the the restrictions, some people are against it. Uh, maybe uh, it's not a mistake, but overall, what's the like let's say top three or five I don't know uh, mistake people makes when, when they they write their script for their their phone system. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what what do you have to catch up with them when? when... Yeah. Okay. So you know we kind of touched a little bit on it. Um, the length of the opening prompt is really important. So just try to minimize that, not make it too long. Um, make sure that the choices are not too similar. And again, we talked a little bit about that, but yeah. just make them very, very distinct. So there's no confusion at all about what the right choice is to make, that kind of thing. Um, the third thing I would say, again, we touched on it a little bit, don't be afraid to introduce uh, personality and a bit of a branding message and even humor if it's appropriate for the industry, introduce a little bit of that 
into the IVR. Um, you know, a lot of people are afraid to take a chance with it. They want to create the same IVR, um, you know, that we hear all the time. So, you know, use it as an, uh, an opportunity to extend the company's brand messaging. And um, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think just writing things in a natural conversational tone and getting away from that robotic thing. And also, um, this is the other thing I was thinking of was avoiding cliches. So we always seem to hear the same phrases, things like, please listen carefully to the entire menu before making your choice, or please listen to our menu as our options have recently changed. Callers do not care <laughs> that your menu has recently changed. So these are things that we always hear in phone systems and people feel obligated to include yeah. in systems. And it, I don't think they need to. I don't know what your feeling is about that, but uh, yeah. No, no, uh, actually, uh, it, it's, it, for me, it's always come back to the simplicity and and uh, you're totally right. Uh, nobody cares about that your menu has changed in recent, I mean, like, and what's new? What's new? Uh, one week, two weeks, three right. weeks, a month? It, it, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, and what you're gonna do in, in in three weeks, or when you feel that it's not new anymore, you will remove that part, or and it's uh, uh you will have to rebuild or rewrite or 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 yeah, cut exactly recording. What, what are you gonna do? You you gonna change that? So I think uh, starting at the beginning, you should just yeah not do that. So uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, here's a question: How many of your clients? want to put in the disclaimer, this call may be recorded for quality and training purposes. I'm finding a lot of people recently want to have that disclaimer at the beginning. What's your feeling about that? I see you wincing a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, the thing is, it's depending um, where they, they live, uh, where their yeah. operation, because it's, right. it's, um, it, it's a question, it's a legal question more than uh, just yeah. preference things. Um, some industry uh, will say it right away. So insurance company uh, will say it. Yeah. I, I think that sometimes they, they are doing uh, for their own protection, but they mm -hmm. are also doing it uh, for um, maybe calm down a little bit the, the customer already uh, or, or like just making sure that look, the, 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 for insurance company, for instance, uh, don't lie when we're asking you question about your situation <laughs> with your car, yes. with your house, because it's recorded. So if there, your house oh, is yeah. burning and you didn't tell us what, or you, you lied, uh, you, you, the insurance contract will not be valid. So, yeah. so I think it's really depending. Some, some people use it like a hammer, almost like come, <laughs> come to calm down the customer. Some True. doing it, uh, some use it as, um, like I said, a legal base and yeah. uh, other really use it for uh, training purposes, uh, which mm -hmm. I, 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 which I do with my team. Um, we're not really taking the, the, the recording the call for um, like control quality in terms of uh, did the, the the agent did something wrong or something it sometime can be used for this but it's rarely used to do that it, it's it will be uh, in telecom company because i work in a call center when i was younger um, we were listening to call for training not for like yeah going back going back in the history and try to figure out what has been done or not um there's so many uh digital digital traces in in each and every system so they're they're not really the need of doing it anymore however yeah. um it, it it's it's very common and i think in some area in some countries and and or even states uh specific states uh they don't have the choice to disclaim uh to to, to declare that they are doing it so right. for me uh i think it's uh it's a good thing uh they are doing it it's it can be used in different ways uh i prefer to do it myself i prefer to do like when i'm training my my staff on the phone uh i prefer to 
listen to a recording after the, the call, like right. sit with my staff and listen to the call each other instead of uh, being uh, like side by side and, and doing some, some coaching yeah. in this way. Uh, it's more casual. After that, the conversation can be more open. So for the, the recording and the prompt by itself, um, I, I think it's it almost a necessity. However, to announce it, I think uh, it's more, it comes out more for a legal, uh, to acknowledge that you, and declare that you're doing it. It's more legal mm-hmm. and, and yeah. transparency. And transparency, I think it's important also to say that in, in terms of tr- transparency to your customer. Um, even even if you're not really doing anything with it, uh, just to declare it, uh, it's it's a uh, it falls into the cliche uh, sentence that you were mentioning before. Uh, however, I still think it can uh, be part of the transparency experience that you yeah. are offering. Just to remind them that it's happening. Yeah, it's exactly. happening, and 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 like like it's like when you're. Uh, when you go in into a public area and you say a, a camera sign like you're now being mm-hmm. filmed uh, or mm-hmm. even a, in a store that says you're now being filmed it's obvious it's 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 yeah. it's almost obvious and i think uh in the phone system it's obvious too that your call will be recorded also yeah however uh, it's still part of the transparency process so for me it uh, is. Yeah. i'm very not against it it's i was smiling a little bit because uh some customers use it uh they have specific uh intention of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, at yeah. some time it's really like 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 i said in the i spoke with the insurance company and and it, it told me exactly what i told you uh yeah we yeah. say that because if they lie, we can come back. And exactly. their intention was very, very clear. Uh, it was not almost nothing else uh, about it. It yeah. was very yeah. like, make sure that they don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have a... I have a, a question, but you already uh, say that that uh, I was uh, I wrote down this question about the how to make your phone system more listenable. You already mentioned about the personality, so uh, this is this is already uh, said. However, is there? I was thinking about a prompt with the music. Mm-hmm. Are you some? Is this something uh, that you hear or it's asked? as to you some from time to time? Yeah, like, so um, I don't know if you've noticed in my files, I mix uh, what I call like a little bit of a flurry. So it's like a little tone at the very, very beginning of the IVR prompt. And most people love it, some people don't, but um, most people really love it. But it doesn't uh, cover the entire prompt. I, I think if you mix music underneath an IVR prompt, it'll sound very disjointed when people make a choice and the music cuts out and then maybe the music plays again during the sub menu. So generally speaking, music is reserved for on hold programs or I'll mix a short flurry at the beginning. Um, I can send you an example of what it sounds like. Um, But yeah, generally music is not mixed under IVR prompts. It's just, it's weird and disjointed if the customer makes a choice in the Music gets cut off abruptly. I hear that. That's my feeling. Uh, yeah, and you're true. But uh, I had an uh, I called somewhere, and at the very beginning, there was a, not like a, a signature tone or signature sounds or like a, a logo. Uh, yeah. Sounds. It right. Was, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was really like a dynamic, very uh, up feeling uh, sound at the very beginning, and somebody talking uh, while uh, announcing the choices, and uh, the sound was just um, reduce, uh, reduce, and slow okay. down, uh, and uh, just until you like it was waiting for you to make some choices uh, and there was no song but at the b- very beginning when you were calling there it was very intense and I was like and this is a yeah kind of was it weird thing. yeah it seems like that might be kind of strange yeah so it was strange so I think uh, I think it's it's a it's a no-go uh, it's a no-go <laughs> I agree I agree no, no. um and lastly uh 
where and how do you find a voice talent? Uh, of course, you go to Alison uh, Voice. Uh, of course you do. That's the only <laughs> choice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yes, I mean, I'm, I'm always available to do custom prompts. So the IVRvoice.com is my website, and you can place an order there. Other than that, I mean, luckily, voice talents are very easy to, uh, to search online. Um, however, those that specialize in telephone systems are actually not that easy to find. You'll, you'll find lots of people that are generalists that can do all sorts of voiceover and, you know. Uh, but yes, um, there, there is specific IVR voice talent apart from myself. Um, and yeah, so it's, um, it, it's easy to find and in multi languages as well. So yeah, it's luckily it, it is actually quite easy to source people that have a fast turnaround and are dedicated to doing IVR. So. Or are you doing other languages than French, uh, than English, sorry? Uh, yeah, I do uh, just sort of basic Spanish, but I'm finding that if people want a native speaker, I'm definitely not it. And regretfully, I did not learn French. Uh, Western Canada, they're terrible about continuing French instruction through uh, junior high and high school. So um, yeah. it was an option and I didn't choose it. And I wish I had because a lot of people ask if I will voice in French. So. And are you um, are you doing a kind of a project project management for uh, with maybe you have a network of, of uh, voice talent uh, with other languages? Is is it something that you can help with customer to to? Definitely to yes. So just because of customers needing to have other languages, I've sourced uh, a very good French Canadian male and female team. I also have a. Uh, Spanish talent based in Barcelona and another in the US. The Barcelona French is a little specific and maybe not marketable for American audiences. But yes, I've, I'm not an agent by any means, but I've had to just branch out and get uh, subcontractors who will work with me who have the same rates and the same turnaround time, because that's usually very important. Yes. I offer same day turnaround and usually these other talent will as well. So it's good. And as, and you, and uh, you're taking care of uh, managing the project. Uh, yes, when they, absolutely. When they reach it to you, 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 yeah, okay. So they don't yeah. need you. Nope, um, it's, it's okay. easy to work. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, it's uh, been already. Uh, I don't know. Uh, some... Where did the time go? My goodness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very, really, very fast. And, it was uh, so very... fun, Philippe. Yeah, uh, actually, I. Always have uh, fun to uh, talk with you uh, on different uh, topic, uh, and uh, it, like I said at the beginning, um, I'm very glad that we finally did this one. Um, I hope uh, we will be able to collaborate in the future on many other projects, and uh, I will definitely send to you uh, many many other customers. It's going to be a, a, a real pleasure to work. It's always a real pleasure to work with you. So Thank I never know you. Uh, so when they are doing business with you. But uh, after that, when I speak with them uh, and they tell me that it went it went great, so uh, I'm I'm always excellent. Uh, Glad to hear uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again, and uh, we I hope that we will have a follow up discussion very soon. Excellent. Thanks so much for the interview. It was great fun. Thank you.